Hi, I'm Kevin Cram of Montour County Rifles, and today I'm going to show you how I do a Seiko extractor installation on a Remington Model 700 bolt. Okay, one of the first things we're going to need to do is remove the original factory ejector so that it's not in the way while we're machining. So this is the factory ejector right here. It's the spring-loaded plunger. Comes out fairly simple. Just knock down a cross pin. You have a plunger and a spring and a cross pin. The next thing we're going to need to remove is the original factory Remington extractor. Uh, there's usually either a small weld or a divot on top that it's welded into and uh, all you got to do is just with punch that out with the same punch you can go back in and with a little bit they'll pop right out. Okay, what I have now is I uh, come over to the lathe and uh, I'm set up in a Labounty fixture in a four jaw chuck and I have the Remington bolt all locked up in there and indicated in. So uh, it's kind of hard to see right now. I'll zoom in a little closer on the dial indicator so you can see, but uh, what I've done is set the dial indicator up on the bolt on the outside of the body and I have it running within about two to three tenths of round right now. So uh, that's what we'll leave our setup at and we'll go ahead and, and bore the head out. But first I'll do a close up so you can actually see uh, how the indicator moves. Okay, here's our uh, close-up of the indicator. Uh, it's kind of hard to see me spinning it, but you'll see the uh, indicator needle just jump around just a little bit. And uh, it's jumping around mostly because of the finish on the bolt is kind of rough. And uh, But we've got it, got it dialed in to about two or three tenths of being true. And uh, we're not going to be recutting the bolt face on this. We're just going to be boring it out for a bushing and leaving the original uh, bolt face because we don't want to change the head space. So you can at least see how the indicator is moving that it really is dialed in pretty true. Okay, I'm uh, kind of freehanding the camera here. What we got now is uh, I'm all set up with my uh, solid carbide boring bar and I had already just barely touched the bolt face and then backed up about two thousandths because I don't want to change the head space so we're not going to be cutting on the bolt face at all. But uh, I'm going to take the uh, original opening and I'm going to bore it out to a diameter of 0.625 and uh, it's going to be a little hard to see while I'm cutting so I'll kind of show you a before and after. Okay what you can see now is I have the uh, bolt face all bored out to 0.625 diameter and that gets rid of all the undercuts that were made from the factory from the original extractor and uh, also what I've made here is a, uh, a little ring bushing that I have bored out pretty close to the diameter that it's going to be bored out when it's finished and to about a 623 diameter and what you'll see is that'll slip right in like that and we'll silver solder that in place and then we'll bore this back out to the right caliber. Okay, what I've got now is uh, I got some of this Swift 95 paste. Uh, it's a flux and silver solder all, all mixed into one. Um, kind of comes in a paste form there. You mix it up. Uh, mix it up with a popsicle stick. And I'm going to take a little bit on my ring. I'm going to put some all around the outside. And a little bit on the bottom. Okay, we've now put the uh, flux and the silver solder that's in the paste form. Uh, kind of covered it all over the ring bushing. And what we're going to do now is we're going to set it down inside of the bolt face. And just kind of just push it down, make sure everything's there. And I'm going to clean up a little bit of the excess with a Q-tip so I don't have have it flowing all over. 
And the other thing I don't know if you're able to see, I've taken some of the Brownells heat stop and I've kind of covered it all over the bolt, especially on the lugs and down the body a little bit. Um, it shouldn't hurt anything with a propane torch to get that hot, but uh, I'm not taking any chances. I don't, I don't want anything to get any, any heat anywhere that I don't want it. So I always just put a little heat paste down there. But, uh, we're going to go ahead with just a regular propane torch. I'm going to go ahead and heat this up. starting to turn into a liquid form, starting to bubble a little bit, turn black. And what the bubbling does is it kind of lets it get all the air out. Why it's still good and hot. Hold this down with a popsicle stick. Make sure everything seats. And there it's cooled down enough it bit fast it's not moving around no more. It doesn't hurt anything because it burned into the popsicle stick a little bit. So I'm going to let this cool a little bit. Uh, I might help it cool down a little bit with a little bit of water slowly rising the cold water up towards it. Okay, here's what our bolt looks like. It's uh, all cleaned up now, cooled off, and we have the bushing, which uh, if I didn't mention is made out of 12L14 steel. Uh, it's a mild steel, very free machining, and uh, silver solders very nicely into these and cleans up nice. So That's all soldered in. We're going to set it back up in the lathe, dial it back in the same way we did, and we will finish machine it for the bolt face diameter that we want. Okay, we've got everything set back up in the lathe and the bolts indicated running about two ten thousandths from true. Uh, I've went ahead and, and touched off and took just a light skim pass just to pick up my diameter. I got about five to seven thousandths more to open this back up. But uh, just show you what it looks like now. I'll go ahead and finish machining it uh, and I'll, I'll show you then what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, we have the bolt face here in the lathe. Uh, the machining part is all done on the lathe. We've bored this out for a standard bolt face diameter and put a nice little 45 degree chamfer on it and cleaned up. Gives it a very nice clean look uh, rather than just taking out the old extractor and putting a new Seiko in. So this is what we got right now and I'll go ahead and take this out and we'll get it all set up in the lathe and get ready to mill the slot for the extractor.